afternoon, Howard Wig, Think Tech Hawaii program, Code Green. I have a very, very special guest this morning, or this afternoon, Chelsea Harder, president of Pono Homes. What in the world is Pono Homes? Chelsea's going to tell us all about it, and it's just wonderful, wonderful work that her and her staff are doing. But first, let me set the stage a bit. I am with the Hawaii State Energy Office and our goal is 100% clean energy by the year 2045, which is not all that long from now. And I was talking to a conservative guy not long ago, and he was arguing against wind and against solar and saying, no, oil is the only way to go, oil and, and the fossil fuels. And a point that he made that I took pretty seriously was the fact that if we go all renewables plus efficiency, we're going to need hundreds and hundreds of thousands. This is worldwide of solar panels. And those use a lot of different minerals, including rare earth minerals. And tens of thousands of giant, giant wind machines, primarily out in the ocean. And they are made out of special composite materials, again, rare earth. And it got me to thinking, just efficiency plus wind plus solar, that is not enough. We need to do resource efficiency also, just in the humble example of a home if it's beginning to have all kinds of problems, why not really fix up that home, make use of all that wood, all that concrete, all that metal that went into making the home and extend its life another 10, 20, 30 years. Resource efficiency, which is a good lead in to Chelsea's talk. This is Pono Homes. And you know what, Chelsea, I am not gonna spoil anything for you. I'm going to let you tell your own story. So take it away, Chelsea. Ah, thank you. It's a pleasure to be here, Howard, on Think Tech. And um, like, uh, like Howard said, I am president of Pono Homes. We are an energy efficiency company that um, focus on getting ourselves to our 100% clean energy goal and um, through single action. So a lot of times we hear those kinds of stories like how we're just told. Um, you know, what can we do to transition to clean energy? And it really starts with the individual. So we help people by kind of doing the dirty work in their home to help be more efficient. So if we could bring up the first slide, please, Haley. So Pono Home, we do um, in-person home energy audits and retrofits for Hawaii residents. So we'll have some of our technicians go into people's homes and they will um, identify opportunities for energy efficiency. Um, that, will mean, um, that will mean installing LEDs, water fixtures, uh, like faucet aerators, high efficiency shower heads, um, advanced power strips or timers to help um, offset energy use, and other things like cleaning vents and fridge coils. So um, like I said, we'll, we'll go into your home and um, really help identify those opportunities and, and do the dirty work to be, help you save energy and money. So the value in this service is not just a one-time savings. It gives cumulative savings over a number of years. You see some of the stats on the screen there. We served, served 13,000 homes and um, saved on energy bills. This, um, it, you know, times those by 10 and it really adds up. So if we, if we can sweep across all homes in Hawaii, we can really make an impact. And we do this through in partnership with Hawaii Energy and the County of Hawaii. Um, I, so in talking about traditional in-home services, we have a technician go face to face. That's a little bit scary during COVID. So what we've done, which I'll talk a little bit about later, is developed a self audit and a virtual audit where people, if they have high risk individuals in their home, can empower themselves to do these same services for, um, for their home. Next slide, please. So why are we doing this? Uh, like Howard said, uh, we're really, really dependent on fossil fuels here in Hawaii. 
We spend a lot of money on them. You'll see some of the stats there. I'm not going to repeat them. Um, and, uh, you know, 80% of our, of, of our energy comes from oil. So how do we transition out of that? It's not only expensive, but it's dirty. Um, and energy efficiency is the easiest, most cost-effective way to help achieve our goal of 100% clean energy. So there are other efforts that have to go in tandem with that. But um, as an individual, this is, um, this is what we can all do. And we can start by, by getting your home service by Pono Home. Um, it also it really provides economic relief during these challenging times for everyone. So um, this kind of a kind of a win win. Next slide, please. So these photos kind of give you a snapshot of um, of what our service looks like. We we work with the homeowner or renter and walk through the home to identify these um, these opportunities and install these measures with uh, with folks so they can know ah this is you know this particular LED I want this size I want this brightness we'll work with you on that because we want to make sure that um, you know you're living the way you want to but that you're the most energy efficient possible. Um, and then through the self audit, so we've developed an online platform, a native web application where people can go online and kind of go through our checklist and be able to say, okay, this is the lighting portion of my home. I'm going to go through and install these measures. I have this installation guide from Pona Home um, and so on and so forth with water measures, cleaning filters, things like that. So it really helps people take matters into their own hands. Um, so for those that are really self-sufficient and say, I can, I can do this all on my own with a checklist, that's great. They can do the self-audit option. For those that say, oh, I kind of want um, some help because I, I don't exactly know what I'm doing. We have a virtual audit where someone from our organization will be online or on the phone um, just like this on Zoom and we'll walk through their home with them and be able to say, you know, see that fixture here? This is, um, you know, this is how you would switch it out. So we are now piloting this on the county of Kauai. We started over the summer and um, by, um, in, by next month, we will have served over a hundred homes and the county of Kauai generously offered $150 worth of energy efficiency items. So they're seeing a ton of savings um, and I'll give, you, um, I'll give you some stats on that in, in a little bit, but if we can go to the next slide and show you a little bit about what the, the web app looks like. So you'll see here homeefficiency.com that, um, that is part of Pono Home. So these, I put three snippets here where you can see this guided self audit through the web application. And we get really specific with our measures because sometimes when there's kind of blanket statements, it's easy to get overwhelmed. So we'll walk you through step by step. Um, and then once you have selected what items you want um, and, you know, if there's challenges, you can always look through the video and say, oh, this is how I install my faucet aerator. Um, then you will submit your uh, request to us. If you're on Kauai, you'll be eligible to get $150 worth of items um, through County of Kauai. And then we, we are looking to implement this more broadly throughout all the Hawaiian islands. Okay, next slide. So this is, um, these are some stats where um, in Kauai, we've saved over 37, thousand dollars per year on energy bills um so over 10 years um you just times that by 10 it gets to be it gets to be a lot of great cumulative savings for people um 81 um, thousand kilowatt hours per year we save and over a million gallons of water and 141 thousand pounds of carbon dioxide so if you want you can go to homeefficiency.com slash kawaii impacts to see this um, and like I said, we're looking to scale this broadly because people are really happy with the results they're getting. However, we are still servicing um, homes through um, in-person, face-to-face. Our technicians have very strict um, COVID protocols. So they have the face mask. They, um, they don't touch anything that they don't need to. They have gloves and shoe covers. So um, we're really making sure that people feel safe 
when, um, when we're going through their home because economic relief is really important, not only um, just in the long run because Hawaii has a high cost of living, but um, really especially because of COVID, we're looking to make sure that people are not um, spending money on something they don't have to, like electricity, if they can switch over um, just some, some measures. Okay, last slide. Thank you. So yeah, but very simple. Why do we do all this? Because there's no planet B. I know there's a lot of, um, you know, SpaceX excitement from, from some uh, communities, but really we're, um, we, we need to cherish this island earth that we have. And I think Hawaii is in a really great position to be leaders in, um, you know, where we live in a closed system where we can be leaders in sustainability because the impacts of our actions really, um, really are affected quickly, and we have really strong communities where we can band together and um, and really move this forward. We were the first to have our aggressive 100% clean energy goals. So, I think um, with the help of other organizations and you know the the great state energy office that um, that Howard works for and policy, we can really get there. So, we're happy to provide this. Um, the small part in um, in achieving our goals. Thank you, Chelsea. You know, we had uh, a question. What excuses do you get to not uh, retrofit the home for efficiency? Ah, oh, it's, a, it's a great <laughs> question. I think everybody's really busy. Um, I think they say, I don't have time. I've been meaning to do it. Um, or I don't quite understand what this means. Um, and then some people will have maybe, um, maybe they're proactive and go out to Home Depot and get all these um, items themselves. Um, and then they say, I haven't gotten around to it. So I think people really have great intentions. And I think that the, just the lifestyles that we have are very busy. So that's kind of the, the roots of why this company was developed in 2014 was like, Hey, we can easily do that. <laughs> um, this is something that, um, you know, we, we, lived and breathe and if we can make it easier on people to be able to provide the service we are happy to thank you thank you chelsea and you mentioned uh hawaii leading the way in clean energy which indeed we do i used to go to mainland conferences real life conferences with real life people and what a what a concept and inevitably i would find that people look to hawaii for uh leadership and within Hawaii, of all the islands, it's Kauai that is really and truly leading the way. There are times when Kauai is able to shut down all of their power plants and run on a combination of efficiency because that brings the demand down, plus the renewables that they have there. And on that very, very cheery note, we need to take a break for one minute. Think Tech Hawaii code green Chelsea Harder back in a minute. Hi, I'm Rusty Kamori, host of Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. I was the head coach for the Punahou Boys varsity tennis team for 22 years, and we were fortunate to win 22 consecutive state championships. My show is based on my book, also titled Beyond the Lines, and it's about leadership, creating a superior culture of excellence, and finding greatness. I feature a wide range of amazing guests who share valuable insights about how going beyond the lines leads to success in everything you do in life. I'm looking forward to you joining me every Monday at 11 a.m. Aloha.
Good afternoon again. Howard Wake with Chelsea Harder, president of Pono Homes. We've covered a lot of ground and we do have a question for you, Chelsea. What are the biggest barriers you see to Hawaii attaining 100% clean energy? And we, we already know you're doing all you can uh, up to alleviate that problem. Right, so building on the, um, so kind of zooming out from the um, residential perspective, I think if we look at the whole system of folks that are working on this tirelessly in Hawaii, I think, um, you know, sometimes policy is a challenge if, um, and I think that's why the 100% clean energy goal was really pushed forward, um, because we need something to, to anchor to and something to keep us accountable. And you know, there are a lot of great people in Hawaii who are so committed to this. And I think um, with policy, they're, they're constantly working to develop these to help us transition. So I think another challenge is that we are stuck in a system where we're very dependent on oil. So this, was, um, this system was developed when Hawaii first got electricity. We're one of the first states in the, the nation with Iolani Palace. And um, back then, oil was cheap, it was easy, we didn't know how dirty it was. Um, and I think uh, changing systems is really hard, but uh, we're all really working towards that. Um, and then cost. Sometimes um, it is a lot more expensive to invest in renewable energy. Um, I think we, we, you know, we touched on energy efficiency is very cheap, but um, you know, it, it can only go so far. And then, you know, Hawaii Energy is really doing such a fabulous job in, um, in cutting our emissions with different programs. So um, yeah, I think those three things, policy, money, and um, you know, recreating a, a system for renewables. And you mentioned Hawaii Energy, Chelsea, can you elaborate a bit about what the relationship between Pono Homes and Hawaii Energy is? Sure, and I think, you know, for anybody who's watching ThinkTech, I'm sure they're very aware of Hawaii Energy's work. Um, they're the energy efficiency program for, um, for Honolulu, Maui, and Hawaii counties. And then there is um, Kauai County, which is a co-op. So everybody working on energy efficiency together. So what we do is we are um, one of their channel partners. So we work directly with them to, um, to get households on board with our services to sign up. And, um, and then we connect with them in addition to going into their home and retrofitting. Um, we also offer them Hawaii Energy um, appliance retrofits. So if they have an old refrigerator, they can work with Hawaii Energy and, um, and switch that out and other larger appliances as well. Now, the refrigerators may be the most dramatic example. I, I know the rebate amount changes over time, but when I last looked at refrigerators, I think the rebate amount was $150. Plus, if they're still doing what they used to do, they would deliver the, or have the new refrigerator delivered for free at no cost, and then they would haul the old refrigerator out, again, at uh, no cost. And they want to make sure to haul that old refrigerator out so you don't put it in the garage for, for your, your fish and, and your beer. And uh, sometimes if, when you're in a hardware store, you'll find that uh, LED lamps are inexpensive. And that's because Hawaii Energy is uh, subsidizing that cost. They should have a little sign there saying compliments of Hawaii Energy, but often they don't. On the subject of efficiency, I like to define efficiency simply as doing more with less. And the easiest, easiest example of that is some of you are old enough to remember what an incandescent lamp was. And the Latin word for white hot heat is incandescer. I once had a uh, state senator measure the temperature of an incandescent lamp. I used to take it around, take them around as samples and burn socks with incandescent lamps. He came up with 465 degrees. Most, that's heat, not light. Most of that was utterly, totally wasted. You know, oh, maybe I'll, I'll let you do this example. Uh, Chelsea, if you remove a hundred watt incandescent to get 
the same amount of lumens, the same amount of light with an LED, how many watts would you need? I'm putting you on the spot here. Thank you. <laughs> I believe 10, but don't quote me on that. Um, so what I understand from, um, from incandescence is that they are 90% inefficient. So they're, mm -hmm. they're actually heat producers and their secondary, um, their secondary service is providing light. So like you said, they're really, um, they're, there's no question as to why you should switch over. Mm -hmm. And I'll have to look up that, um, that exact number. No, it, it, I'll give you a hint. The, the ratio is about 10 to 1. You can remove ah. 100 watt incandescent, replace it with a 10 watt LED, and you've got the same amount of light. And I guess right. that LED, after you know, it's been burning for hours, and it's just warm. It's producing almost all uh, heat, or almost all light. And speaking of which, some people are still saying, oh, I don't like LEDs because they are harsh and they're glary. You can get any, you can get LEDs, and I think you probably offer this, in any flavor you want now. Really, really warm, soft light, medium light, uh, blue light, and uh, so forth. The, the more blue it is, the, the more intense the, the look of the light. Uh, efficiency as a, an economic investment. Let's say you took out that 100 watt incandescent put in a 10 watt LED, how, how are you at numbers, Chelsea? I was so, going to write some numbers by, but, uh, <laughs> I can spit them out if you want. Uh, well, let's say take out a 100 watt incandescent screw in a 10 watt LED, you're saving 90 watts. You burn that light for a thousand hours a year you're saving 90,000 watts, which is 90 kilowatt hours, which is times three. Just from that one little light, you're saving $30 a year based on 30 cents a kilowatt hour. And you paid, say, five or six dollars for that LED light. And you say, oh, that's so expensive. First year savings, $30. Is that well, an example? LED? Uh, what efficiency is all about, yeah, yeah. And then they last, at that rate, they last for like uh, 15 years. So that, that's just a dramatic example of what uh, efficiency does for you. And all of the items that you mentioned are uh, likewise super, and, super, super efficient. And Howard, I'd love to go back to your, um, your point before about um, LEDs offering different, um, different warmth and um, mm -hmm. different size. So we like, let's say we go to a house that has a chandelier and they're really, um, they're really interested in maintaining the aesthetic of that. So we'll make sure that we, we match their light, um, the shape of it and the warmth with that. So we definitely want to work with the homeowner to make sure that it's an, always an upgrade, not a downgrade. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And just, just speaking of chandeliers, the lamps that go in there are called the candelabra lamps generally. They're skinny and they, they, the base is quite small and you screw them in. I re recently did an unscientific survey and found that even the candelabra lights yield 80 lumens per watt. And the typical incandescent light, well, if it was that small, it would yield about 10 lumens per watt. So even with a candelabra, you're saving uh, by a factor of uh, uh, 10 to 1. And again, yeah. you you get any flavor that, that you, you choose. If, um, if we want, we can go to slide four again, um, just to kind of uh, speak to that point. Um, so if you look on the left, we have on our native web app, and I'm sorry if it's a little bit small, um, but you have the different types of light. That's just a snapshot. There are, there's about nine of the different ones that you can choose from. So we look for indoor, outdoor light, uh, different, um, you know, different globe shaped things like that. So we'll make sure that, um, like I said, people get the get the right one. Uh, similarly, mm -hmm. with um, with water fixtures, if you look at the um, if you look at the shower head, if you're used to a handheld one, we'll make sure you get a handheld one for when you switch out to high efficiency. Mm -hmm. um, I also want to mention that um, a lot of people think High efficiency shower heads are low flow. Um, they're just more highly aerated. So you still get the same pressure, 
um, and the same experience. It's just, um, you know, air mixed with water and it's um, still invigorating and you're not going to, um, you know, you're not going to downgrade into something that doesn't give you as much pressure. I think the technology since it first came out has really, um, has really changed and, um, and it still offers that. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned that one, one of the items that you offer are power strips. And before you describe what a power strip is, why it's important, I will say that the two huge users in homes, in Hawaii homes, used to be the resistance water heater. Those are gone because we all have heat pumps or solar water heating. And the refrigerators, and 20-year-old refrigerator of a certain size would consume about 1,400 kilowatt hours a year, get the same size refrigerator now with all the bells and whistles, 400 kilowatt hours a year. Tremendous savings just from efficiency. Uh, but in our closing minute or so, can you describe why power strips are so important? Well, power strips are important because a lot of times we have um, we have appliances plugged in, and they will pull um, they will pull voltage out of the wall um, and cause you we call it a vampire load. So it'll um, they'll suck the energy out of the wall, and when you're not even using it. So the advanced power strip you can plug that in and plug your TV, um, DVR, whatever you have into that power strip. And um, you can make sure that it is not drawing power when you're not using it. So it's pretty mm -hmm. handy. Yeah, and the more and more gadgets, electronic gadgets that we have in our home, the greater the percentage of total energy use they, they account for. You go into a commercial building now and up to 30% of the energy used in a commercial building is called other because it's all those electronic gadgets. And when you leave the office for at the end of the day, a lot of those things may still be on and drawing considerable power. So the idea there in the commercial sector is to get those uh, darn, darn things off. So same, same principle with uh, uh, residential things, yeah. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And again, I want to emphasize that Hawaii is leading the nation in efficiency. We're ahead of anybody else, even a super, super efficient state like uh, California. And people like you, Chelsea, are the big reason why we are attaining our goals. And we are looking at the, you know, the 100% clean energy goal. It looks like we're, we may uh, finish ahead of schedule at the rate we're going because yeah. of people like you and technology is improving so, 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 so rapidly. I, I gave you the example of, uh, of LEDs. And then on a very cheery note, the cost of solar is coming down, the cost of wind energy is coming down. They exceed, they're, they're much cheaper than uh, coal energy right now. So there is, with all the doom and gloom out there in the world, there is definitely, definitely uh, cause for optimism. So on that very cheery note, you have uh, a, a little parting phrase here for us, Chelsea. Oh, did, did yeah. you give contact information in the last slide? Pardon? Did I give what information? Contact. Oh, yes, if you want to contact us, please, um, please email us at Info at honohome.com. So I N F O at P O N O H O M E dot com. And um, we'll be happy to speak to you about our different services. And I think, um, you know, parting words is that we're all in this together. We're so grateful to have uh, partners like you, Howard, and ThinkTech and Hawaii Energy, County of Kauai, and all the folks that are working towards this goal. And um, something we're really grateful for is the, the communities here in Hawaii as well. So thanks everyone for, for charging on and I'm really confident that, um, that we're gonna meet our goals. So thank you for having me today. Thank you, Chelsea. It's been a great, great pleasure. And on that very cheery note, farewell from Think Tech Hawaii, Cold Green. See you later. <laughs>